gorgeous? Does that funk have you feeling stuck? Have you questioning your purpose or even yet having you asking if your best years are behind you? Girl, you have zero obligation to stay in that funk. This podcast is for women who want to get the funk out of here, who want to play bigger, ask for more, and step out of mediocrity. Imagine a life filled with lots of energy, excitement, and filled with funk instead of that funk. This is the Unfunk Your Mind Podcast. I'm your host, Crystal. Let's go. Welcome back to the Unfunk Your Mind Podcast. If you're tuning in for the first time, here's the deal. It's all about taking action to unfunk your mind. Knowledge is power, but action is what sparks change. Every month, I drop a fresh episode with a fun, sometimes easy, and sometimes not so easy action assignment. And most of the time, this podcast reviews stuff you already know, but might have tucked away under the rug. The mission? Unfunk your mind and get you moving. After all, a running shower can't cleanse you unless you jump in. So let's jump in and get unfunked. Last month's action assignment was to listen deeply. Funny because about a week or two after recording that podcast, I was sitting outside and heard what I thought were water sprinklers. They come up in the morning and they water the plants. So I didn't pay much attention and went on about my day. Later, the landscapers, they're in the backyard. I looked up and I noticed there was this commotion going on. Then one of the guys motioned for us to come outside. We went outside and guess what? That sound was not the water sprinklers, you guys. It was this huge rattlesnake. So not only am I listening more deeply to others, I am also listening deeply to nature sounds, especially in my backyard. So now we move right into September. September signifies transition. It marks the end of the summer here in the States and the beginning of fall. The weather starts to cool and nature starts to prepare for changes in the challenges of the winter months. It's coming up on the time when farmers spend time in their fields harvesting their crops. Just like farmers spend time harvesting or gathering their crops and checking out their results, perhaps it's time for your harvest season where you gather your results from your efforts made thus far in the year. Write them down and shine a light on some of your results. Are there any past results that you might be able to capitalize on? Were you saving for something and now it's time to collect those results and see where you're at? Or have you saved enough? Or how much do you have left to go? Were you trying to throw more veggies on your plate? How's that going? Is it going well and now you can maybe capitalize on that and start adding a few new fruits now? Is that side business performing better than expected and you can think of adding a new product to the mix? Are there any of these past results that you have that you can capitalize on? And yes, with September, this new season, there's a new energy, a new vibe that comes with this harvesting season. A shift, if you will. Nature starts to prepare for what's to come with winter. We've seen it before. Leaves start to fall, blooms start to fade, animals begin hibernation. Bye-bye, rattlesnakes. And just the overall pace of nature starts to slow. Some studies show that the change in season also shifts our productivity and energy levels. A great time to check in and assess your energy levels. What does your inner gauge show? Do you have the energy to capitalize on any of those past results? Or maybe you only have the energy to stay on pace because it's all you can do to keep your train on the track. Just be aware of where you are as you head into this season. Transitioning seasons can be an inspirational time too. It can inspire personal growth and resilience. So embrace this changing season. It can be an opportunity to develop what you've personally harvested. Maybe time to adjust your personal or professional goals. Maybe it's time to just store your harvest for later. Maybe your results are not ready to bear fruit yet and you just need to stay the course. In either case, it's likely some action is needed, even if it's a subtle change. Because think about it, you likely change your summer wardrobe out for your fall wardrobe. Or you move from air conditioning to just opening the windows to let the fresh air in. Or you order that cozy pumpkin spice latte instead of a refreshing iced coffee. Nothing drastic, just tiny shifts. Just like you shift these tasks and routine, 
it's likely you may need to shift something around after you have collected and assessed your harvest of results. Envision it. You're the farmer harvesting your crops. Or another way to put it, simply stated, you're gathering all your results thus far. Write them down. What does that harvest look like on paper? Do you have more crops than you expected? Are your results crazy abundant? Do you have more in a certain area of your life than in other areas? Are your results a reflection of where your priorities have been over the course of the year or years? Are the crops a great reflection of the woman you're becoming? What do those results say and do they match what you would actually like them to say? Did you get more carrots and you wanted more strawberries? You get the picture. Take September to gather and assess your harvest or simply stated, review your results thus far. And hey, if you're satisfied with your harvest, well, keep going. Don't feel obligated to capitalize on any one part of your harvest if your energy gauge is low. But if you're not satisfied with your harvest, don't be too hard on yourself. Make no judgments, but just observe. I love what Trent Shelton recently said about time and achievement. I'm paraphrasing here, but it was about everyone wearing a different watch. Just because Susie's watch says it's time for her to get promoted or build a new house, doesn't mean that your watch is keeping the same time. See, your watch may be telling you it's time for something completely different. Basically, it's totally okay if your harvest isn't as plentiful as someone else's or that it looks completely different. And thank goodness for that. Can you imagine if all of our harvests were the same? We would miss out on variety and hey, miss out on all the celebration parties celebrating milestones at different times for different people. And who doesn't like celebrations? It's likely certain that your time is different on your watch and don't let your brain turn your harvest into a famine situation. So what if you have less to work with? I've been witness to someone having less and yet ending up with more. You've witnessed it too, actually. Like the person that has two close friends versus the person that has a hundred friends. The person with the two friends has a, such a deeper relationship with each of them than the person with the hundred friends. So see, less can be more. So make sure when you collect your harvest, you're looking at it with fresh new eyes. Just like September is a time for change and shifts, Perhaps it's time to shift your perspective on your result you've been able to achieve thus far. Those results took effort and don't let anyone, not even yourself, diminish how hard you've worked up to this harvest. And here is what else you know. When the harvest is low or not as expected, the world continues to turn. You've likely been in this place before and have proof that you can persevere. Like the season, you can shift. Shift right out of park and shift right into drive. Drive some change. You can take your cues from nature too. You have permission to change your mind, mix up your goals, shift your actions, grow at work, develop a new bloom or new skill, or simply just store your energy until next season. The beauty is that it is your choice. Just be an active participant in your life and be aware of the choice you're making. Does that choice affect your harvest or your results? And are you okay with that? So September's action assignment is to collect your harvest. Determine if those results are taking you towards the woman you are becoming and also gauge your energy. Are there any past results that are ready to be capitalized on? Do you need to slow your pace to get better crops? Do you need to keep at it because you're liking your harvest of crops? Do you have an abundance of harvest that perhaps you need to give away or store? Do you need to ask for help to learn how to make your next harvest more abundant? And there was actually this recent study done on farmers and their coping strategies when they have light harvests or ruined crops. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never ever put much thought into how the farmer survives if he or she loses their crops or it doesn't fruit as they had planned. That must be devastating especially for those where their crops or their income are their main source of income. I can't even imagine. And that's why I continued to read the study because I have to imagine that they have all kinds of feelings and worry. And you know what one of the top coping strategies was? We don't do it enough. It was simple. It literally said they asked for help. 
whether from the bank, from other farmers, from their vendors, from their family, or those vendors they have contracts with, yes, they ask for help. Ladies, if your harvest is light, your results aren't taking you in the direction you had hoped, just ask for help. If the farmer can survive a light harvest with this simple action, so can you. Ask for help amongst your friends, from your mentors, from your church, a community group, your neighborhood. I truly believe there are so many people in the world that if they have it, they will be more than happy to help or share some of their wisdom to get you back on your desired path. Okay, ladies, let's go take some cues from nature or be the farmer. Go harvest or gather your results and perhaps make some lemonade with all the lemons you harvested or collected. Give some lemons away if you have an abundance or store what juice you have in ice trays to wait until you have enough to make some lemonade. Just remember that every action counts. Whether big or small, every harvest ultimately leads to a meal. So stay intentional so those harvests or those results guide you toward the woman you're becoming. Okay, ladies, let's go. Hi, ladies. Thanks for tuning into my mom's podcast, but I wanted to let you know she is not a doctor, not a psychologist, but just my mom, encouraging you to get back to the basics with lots of action. Oh, and to help you, unfunk your mind. Before you go, Superwoman, I'd love it if you took a little action for me. Like, subscribe to my podcast and leave a review. Also, share the episode with a friend. And as a thank you, hit up my website, unfunkyourmind.com. That's right, unfunkyourmind.com to grab free journal prompts. Okay, ladies, now is the time to go unfunk your mind. Play bigger and ask for more. Open the door to possibility and cancel playing small. So get up and go!